nice warm bulky scarf for fall and winter it's August here it's already starting to get cold I'm sitting out here I'm chilly this scarf is gonna be perfect for your fall wardrobe um, it's an easy beginner project all you need to know is how to half double crochet so if you don't know how to half double crochet I do have a quick little video you can check out it's in the links below so if you need to learn go check that out and then come back to this video so what we're going to be using to make this really fast is a Q-hook. So we need the Q-hook, um, which is a 16 mil, and we need um, two balls of this Bulky 5 yarn. I'm using Bernat Roving. I love it. It is so soft, like you want to feel it like just on your face and your neck to make sure it's not going to irritate you. Um, this is a wool acrylic blend, but it's so nice and soft, it's not itchy at all. So it's a great choice for a scarf. Um, so we are going to use two strands of it and what else we're going to need is one of these threading needles and we want the really big end on them so because you need to fit two strands of bulky yarn through that and this one's great I love this this threading needle so this project is going to take you you know less than an hour to make it's really fast it's super easy so let's get started Okay, so I'm going to take two strands of bulky weight yarn. So this is um, the Bernat Robing and it is a bulky five. So I have my Q hook and my two strands together. So I'm going to start out making a slip knot. And then I just put that on the hook and tighten it up. Okay, and now I'm going to chain 70 for this scarf and it's just going to fit nicely around the neck, um, not too tight, not too loose. Okay, so you want to chain really loose and you want nice even stitches. You don't want to turn your chain as you do this. Just do it slow make sure they're neat because you don't want the edge of your scarf to look messy so if they don't look good uh, take it out and redo it because you want your scarf to look nice like even this here one of them's bigger one of them smaller I don't like that usually I will pull that back if I don't like how it looks So I'm just going to show you this again. So you want to do a slip knot, put it on your hook, make sure you chain loose, make sure your chains are nice and even. And I'm just going to shut this off. I'm going to do my 70 and I'm going to come back when it's time to join. Okay, so I've chained 70. So now when we join this chain, we have to make sure that our chain is not twisted. So you just need to gently feed the chain through. I'm twisting it here as we go. Okay, so we're gonna get to the end and we're gonna slip stitch into the first chain. Okay, so now we've joined it and you can just grab it and just double check that it hasn't got twisted anywhere. Okay, so now we're going to do half double crochets. So chain two and you're going to want to go into that first chain right there. So it's really important to count as you go around and make sure you have your 70 stitches. So it's my first one. So now to half double crochet, you're going to yarn over, go through, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Yarn over, go through, pull up a loop, and then go through all three. So 
In some of my other videos, I show you how to thread the yarn around your fingers. I'm getting a little bit of a tangle here. There we go. So I always just go around. You want to have a nice tension. So yarn over. So now I am going to keep continue counting all the way around and when I get to the last one I'll show you. Okay, so I've got to 69 so my last stitch is going to be in here. So there's 79 or 70 and then here is my starting chain 2 and we are going to want to go in between there if you can see. You want the two loops on top and a loop under. You don't want to grab here or you're going to have a big hole. So we slip stitch to join. And then I'm going to chain two. And instead of going this way around, I'm going to turn my work. And we're not going to go into this very little tiny hole where it would like be way too hard to get the hook in there. We're going to go into the next one and then our, our final one will go on this side. So just make sure as you go around you're counting to make sure you have the right amount of stitches. So there's one. Turning is going to give you more of a ribbed kind of effect and it's really going to help keep that join to stay straight. I just like the look of turning. The important thing is just that you count so you know um, what stitches to go in. You don't want to be increasing or decreasing each round as you go. So I'm just going to keep again going all the way around and I'll meet you back for the join again. Okay so I've worked all the way back around again. So I have 69 so I'm going to go into my final stitch right here, 70. And again here is my chain two and I want to go and find those two loops. Make sure the loop is underneath and that's what I go through to slip stitch to join. And then chaining two and turn my work. So again we don't go in the first, we go in this this big stitch here. So this really is a nice easy project, um, it's great for a beginner, all you need to know is how to do the chain and how to do your half double crochet, slip stitch to join, it's very simple, you can watch TV while you do this, it doesn't take a whole lot of fussiness. The hook is is pretty big to start with. It can feel a little bit awkward, but once you get working with it, it it does really move along quickly. I think that you probably have to work up the muscles in your hands too. I find after using this hook for a while though it can my hand can get tired. I will take a break. Um especially if I'm making uh the sharks or mermaids if you take a break and do some of the fins just using a different hook can give your hand a break and then go back to it. I find sometimes a tiny hook my hand actually cramps more. I find the easiest hook for me would be probably a nine. I find I can work really well with it and put a lot of hours in and my hands not bother me at all. This one's great. I can make one of these scarves in probably a half an hour 
I would say. I haven't completely timed it out, but it's not long. It's something that I would sit and watch a TV show and just whip up a scarf like this. I haven't made this one with functioning buttons, but you could easily add a couple buttons on there, um, just on the join line even, just to dress it up if you want, if you like the button look. So I'm gonna keep working on that and I might do a couple more rows and then come back. Okay, so I'm to the end of my fifth round. So one, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna put my 70th stitch in here. I'm gonna slip stitch to join and chain two and turn. I'm gonna do six rounds for this scarf. That will um I only have to use two balls for that, so that's a good a good um, a mail for a scarf. So your investment would be just under twenty dollars. This yarn is probably about six ninety nine at the store. It's not too expensive. Okay, so there's again we skip that first, we go into the next. So this will be our final round. And that will give us a nice, uh, thick, bulky scarf. Wrap around our neck two times. And again, I will just continue to go all the way around and then I'll meet you back when it's time to join up again. Okay, so I am almost done. It's so exciting. Okay, so last stitch. And again, we slip stitch to join, knot into the chain, up into the first stitch. Okay, so the turning gives us a nice um, straight seam. So we have our tail down here to weave in, and I'm going to trim this. It's so awesome when we have yarn left over. So I have this yarn left over from my two balls so I can make um, a flower out of this, which is awesome because what I like to do is take a scarf like in this color and then do a coordinating color. So maybe a lighter gray or a darker charcoal or a black and then put a flower the same color as the scarf. So it's a nice combination looks nice together. So I'm just going to pull that through and then we're going to weave in our ends. So I'll show you how to do that. Okay, I use a threading needle with a really big end on it so that it's easy to put two strands of bulky yarn through without losing your mind trying to get it through. So that I buy these from Walmart and I love them. I haven't found them anywhere else. So sometimes Walmart's not in stock, which drives me crazy because I lose them all the time. But anyways, I gotta keep better track of my stuff. Okay, so you wanna pull that through so that you don't make a big bump. You want it to just hide it nicely. Now we don't have a good side or a bad side to this scarf because of the turn. So you're just going to weave down through so you weave one way. I want to go all the way through just through the top. Weave that through and then you're going to weave back the other, the opposite direction. So this will keep your yarn secure. I always weave. I will even crochet over ends if I can sometimes just to save time. I'll crochet over them and then I'll weave them back in the opposite direction because it's always just, you know then it's gonna be in there secure. It's not gonna come undone. So once you've done that, pull it to make sure it's not bunched up your scarf. Then you can just trim it off. 
and we're going to do the same thing with the other side. So as you grab it, you can kind of see like you don't want it to make a big hump on your edge. All these little details are important. Like you want to figure out how you're going to weave it down so that you don't see this big ginormous bump up at the side of your scarf. So I've weaved it through and then again come back on this side and weave down. So this was super fast. Like you could whip up a bunch of these in different colors. I just, I have a lot of gray because gray last year was the most, this color was the most popular. Everybody wanted it. I had a really popular um, beanie with four button scarf last year and everybody wanted it in this color. So I stocked up this year on this color. So I have a lot of it on hand. And I really love this roving that Bernat makes. Peyton's makes it as well, and it's really nice too. But Bernat's a little bit more affordable. So there we go. Okay, so here it is, guys. Your nice, warm, bulky scarf for fall, winter. It's summer, and it's already cold. I'm already like snuggling up in this thing. It's so nice. It's fast and easy. It's a great beginner project. You're gonna make this in less than an hour. You're, you're gonna you know, spend less than 20 on this. It's a perfect gift, or you can match this up with your own wardrobe, wear it with a cute leather jacket, jean jacket. It's gonna look awesome. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you wanna stay updated on new videos and tutorials. All the links are in the description box below. Check that out, uh, links to buy the yarn, links to my blog, links to social media, all the stuff you need to know is there. So thanks for watching guys and have an